Hi there. Recently, I've been knitting kitchen rags and cotton yarns while attending university lectures. It's a pretty great way to stay grounded while listening without getting distracted by counting stitches or looking at instructions. And we get a nice bunch of rags to circulate through in the kitchen. I have been enjoying different tools and methods to make my own beverages, besides the typical tea, coffee, or cocoa. I bought a scoby this fall to make my own kombucha with, which I find really delicious and also interesting to make. Uh, recently I also thrifted a juicer, and lastly I've been enjoying borrowing my parents' old soda streamer. All of this just gives me a lot of options for fun drinks to make at home. I found this lamp in a thrift store with the color changing light bulb from Ikea at a really good price. I love putting it on the orange setting, it's a really good mood lighting and it feels like a sunrise or sunset. It's really nice to use as the primary light source in the morning when your eyes are still sensitive. I own a lot of stuff, that's no secret. I have a lot of hobbies and I realized those hobbies through a lot of things and tools. Um, recently though, I was inspired by my friend to sort through some older archives of things I own and reestablish a connection to them, touch them and sort them and give away some of the things I don't actually have a relationship with anymore. That way it feels like a more dynamic thing than just owning something passively. This candle holder is very precious to me. I bought two matching ones off of Facebook Marketplace. And I accidentally left one unwatched, so it got burned. But I still love this one. It's clearly handmade and it matches the next item on this list, which is this mushroom lamp, which was inspired by Inge. I'll leave her channel link in my description. I found the lamp at a secondhand store back in the spring and my dad helped me fix it up so it would work. We use it as another mood light in the living room. It's really sweet even when it's not lit and when it's lit it feels like this very warm and magical item. Thomas gifted me this little setup for mixing my own tea blends, especially useful for all of my herbal teas. I love mixing Cylon with raspberry leaf and mint. It's this aromatic but still deep taste. You all probably know I enjoy a good cup of tea, so it's nice to have different options. Another thing I really enjoy is soap. We have so many different types of hand soap in this apartment. Four at the kitchen sink, as well as four at the bathroom sink. There are soaps for all the different moods. We also have an additional little refillable travel size soap that I recently acquired. This summer, I spotted a pair of glasses that I found intriguing at a thrift store, and I bought them impulsively. They were quite cheap. I haven't been wearing my glasses regularly for maybe a year and a half at this point, and I was thinking it would be a fun option to have. And then I get my vision tested and I get them newly made for the new prescription, and after getting them adjusted, I have started to wear them every day, and I really do love the way that they look. Um, they're quite different to my old glasses, and I really like feeling like I've entered a new era of how I look. I really love just briefly lighting my Palo Santo for a burst of scented air to set the mood, especially when I'm home alone. This camera was a perfect gem I found as I was looking specifically to replace my old Digicam which I acquired in 2021. I got it last fall and it's one of my favorite thrift finds ever. The footage and images I take with it have a certain fuzzy, warm, nostalgic quality and using it also makes me notice different motifs, I think. It's really special, it's this tiny little thing I can always put in my pocket. It's also more discreet than using a 
a real camera and more personal than using your phone if you're with others. Slowly, we ended up with enough fish paraphernalia that putting them all together in one room would make it a fish-themed room, which is what we did in our bathroom. It's a fun little detail for guests to discover, and now I look out for fish stuff whenever I go thrifting. I bought this wallet back in the summer just because I like the material and construction. Well, after doing the aforementioned reconnecting with my belongings, I wanted to have a proper pencil case for some of the really nice drawing stuff I realized I owned from when I was an obsessively drawing teenager. This wallet is a perfect pencil case. Serendipitously, it fits so many pens and pencils. Getting this CD player has altered my relationship with music and improved my day-to-day -day life. It's a different and fun way to be immersed in the universe of a whole album instead of a disconnected number in a playlist. And there are no algorithms feeding you your next album of choice. I like letting guests pick out a CD to play. It's less pressure than to play something off your own Spotify. Here you know that whatever you choose, it's something that we own and therefore most likely enjoy. I really like repairing my clothing and finding ways to solve problems with the items I own. I'd worn these socks in hard leather shoes and my toenail was a little too long, so it cut through the fabric and made a hole on each foot. I have an old school sock mushroom for darning socks, I'm not sure that's the actual term, but uh, <laughs> I used that for sewing up these patches. I think this is another layer to the reconnecting with my belongings. Um, feeling enough ownership to spend time on something that might otherwise have been thrown away, and intertwining my labor with this object. Another atmospheric touch I love to add to my apartment has been oil diffusing, since being gifted a lavender oil for my birthday last year by Lagerbjörn. Now it's a big part of my home ritual, and it feels very interwoven with my sensory associations with comfort, care, and coziness. My favorite scents are geranium uh, and also lemon and lavender. Lagerbjörn gifted me a pocket knife for my birthday this year. The same model they also have, which I have commented on when we've been out on excursions and they brought it out to cut up fruit, for example. My grandfather loved pocket knives and I love feeling connected to him when I hold this in my hand. It also has an amazing hand-sewn cover, which is also making it feel a little less intimidating to bring around. We recently got access to a citywide compost system, and I really like the bucket we bought for any food scraps. It's subtle and accessible on the countertop, and it also makes our regular trash can fill up so much slower and also smell less. For my 25th birthday, my grandmother gifted me this stuffed rabbit. I've been looking at them for a while, they're by this Danish company called Mailai. And I really love the designs and the fabrics, small clothes and such. I really love miniatures. And I actually discovered that I owned one rabbit already from my childhood. I found it when I was looking for clothes for the new one in my parents' storage, but they're now friends. I recently knitted a tiny sweater for my friend, and this one actually matches the one I knitted for myself this summer. I really want to make so many more clothing items for them both, they really bring me so much joy. Recently we moved our furniture around, leaving this wall empty. I loved arranging my pieces around each other. Almost all of these are made by me. Except this lithograph. I found it in a thrift store. I actually left it there for a day uh, while I was realizing how great it was and went back for it the next day, crossing my fingers that it was there and it still was. 
Its frame was painted white, so I sanded that off, which I think makes this piece pop more, look more lively, less pale, less easy to overlook, since it is a bit subtle. I also got this convex mirror for my birthday from Thomas. I love seeing our whole living room at once, this cozy, lovely sight, and it's been a fun thing to use for filming videos for a little bit, which you will see soon. If you watched some of my recent videos, you'll have seen me knit and felt a pair of slippers for myself. I now also knitted a pair for Thomas, and I've knitted a pair for Lagerbjörn and for my mom, and I'm working on a pair for my father. I've promised a pair to my grandmother, so everyone's getting a different color combination of home knitted and felted slippers this year. <laughs> it is the pattern called the 19 row duffers slipper pattern. Uh, I'll try to find it and link it down below. I really recommend it. It's quite easy. Uh, it's gotten cold now and I really enjoy putting on my slippers to keep my feet nice and warm during the winter. And it's a nice gift to give as well. I got a plant last spring. It's been sitting next to my sink until the point where it got too big, and I decided to cut it and propagate the cutting. This plant has gotten so big, and there's almost no more space for it, so I think I'm going to cut it. And then hopefully it'll still grow just maybe more in width than in height. And then I'll plant the top a different place with more space. I just feel like it looks <laughs> a little too thin on the middle here. I mean, it could still sprout parts here, but yeah, I'm going to try to see if that works. I'm a little nervous about this. Let's see. Maybe here? Ah. Oh, little baby plant. <laughs> I hope you're going to be okay. This is the plant that I cut down. Now it's really big and I changed its location so it has the space to grow. It smells really lovely. I love geranium scent. This is the propagated cutting, now placed in the same spot as the bigger plant it came from. I reckon I can keep that pattern up for, like, forever. <laughs> I love documenting some of my experiences, emotions, and thoughts. I have used the same type of book to write in, this green journal with dark green lines, since 2018, and I've filled up four notebooks. I'm working on the fifth and I have three blank ones left. Sadly, they're not in production anymore, so I'll have to find a new type of notebook after that point. I realized that I own a lot of scarves. I like accessorizing any outfit with a different scarf. It can really tie everything together, plus it's nice for these cold months and practical. I also layer several things often, such as my snood with a proper scarf and maybe a hat on top. Here I'm like putting on almost all of my scarves just to show how many I have. It's a nice way to personalize an outfit which otherwise in the winter very easily becomes very coat dominant and boring to look at. I recently started drawing more again after getting into my storage of nice drawing utensils. I've been drawing kind of three nice things from the day before. Not a fully fledged routine, but often enough. This was inspired by Lagerbjörn again, who is so good at nurturing their relationship with their belongings and who draws often to like document life, process emotions or illustrate a thought. It really felt like reconnecting with a big part of myself that I haven't nurtured in a while. Like, 
If you don't know, I used to draw for like hours every day when I was a teenager. You might be following me from that time. And if you do, uh, hello, you've stuck around for a really long time and I enjoy you being here. I bought these shoes last November because my former Doc Martens were worn out and the sole cracked. I haven't worn them in until this fall though because my feet blister easily and I have other shoes that wouldn't hurt to wear. But I put in the time and now I really love wearing them. I randomly found this poster at a thrift store this spring and it's a print of a silk painting from the 1980s. I really love the grid format, I love the colors, I love the depiction of Danish landscapes and just the general vibe of this poster. It's now hanging in my kitchen area next to an original piece by my friend Marie. I recently made this necklace in order to use up some of the amber from huge amber necklaces I got from actually both of my grandmoms. <laughs> it was yet another instance of using some of my old equipment that's been laying around. Uh, namely my jewelry equipment, um, and it was really nice to use again. I really enjoy the color combinations of this necklace. I found this armchair at a really good price at the thrift store, and I just knew I wanted to own it before I even really thought it through, such as where to put it. <laughs> I got it all the way home and up all the stairs on my own, and I started to rearrange the living room to fit it in there while Thomas was at work. But I think it really transformed our living room into a more conversation-oriented space, which I really love. It's a nice broad chair, and I love sitting in it, and I love the way it looks. This is another thrift find that I wanted to buy for a while before I found it. I love that it reflects the light back from the metal plate and I like a little diversity in where my candles are placed. I've used it as a primary light source during the dark winter mornings, really feeling like an 1800s wench, sitting with my tea and shawl all lit up by only candlelight. <laughs> I recently found this carafe, the same model that my parents used to have, so I immediately felt nostalgic and wanted to own it for that reason alone. But on a practical level, it's also a better amount of water than our previous less than a liter carafe, both for me and Thomas, but also especially when we have guests over. I discovered that I like using hand weights to move around and feel my body a little bit every day. So it's not like I'm fully working out with them, more just warming up my body and using them to stretch out and to facilitate some gentle movements. I cut my bangs in the summer and someone expressed concern about me regretting it, but don't worry, I really haven't. I feel much more like myself. I feel like I've had the bangs forever. I also just really like how they look with my glasses. I recently got a silver chain from my paternal grandmother and added on this charm I got from my maternal grandparents as a child. I spent a lot of time on the beach with them, so the little shell reminds me of a lot of memories with them. And the other charm is this little yin yang symbol that my mom brought back from her travels in her youth. <laughs> so it might be from Indonesia. This is a look I've been rocking for a while now. I really like it because it feels like I've done something with my nails without the chipping that a full nail polish look has within like a day for me. 
So it's low maintenance and quite elegant and feels like a very personal touch. I picked up these Sony headbuds at a swapping spot this summer, mainly because I was curious about them and liked the hot pink color. I was surprised by how nice the sound quality is, and since I got this lightning stick to jack stick adapter for my parents, I've loved using them on the go. I like how they look on the outside of my jackets, like this little cheeky hot pink wire. We live on the top of our apartment building, and so all of our walls are slanted, including our windows. It's been raining a lot this fall, and the sound of the drops is really special on the tilted windows. Especially when lying in bed at night and being about to sleep, it's this very cozy and comforting sound. I have to romanticize this weather since there's no escaping it, so it's important to find the nice aspects of it. That was all. This was kind of like a video version of my drawings of nice things that I enjoy. A type of gratitude practice and connection with my belongings all at once. I hope you're inspired to look warmly at your own life and that you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one.